I can introduce to you Jack James. Uh, Dr. James is a founder and managing direc director of Pontus Research. He will discuss with us today about uh, insects on the aquaculture menu, a new protein source for shrimp. His presentation is on slides and audio only. So if you look at his presentation uh, and you don't see Dr. James move, then there's nothing wrong with your screen. Uh, it is um, uh, recorded this way. Uh, so you can listen and you can follow this, uh, the slides. Then after the presentation, we will have a live uh, Q&A session with Dr. James. Hello, my name is Jack James and I'll be giving you a presentation today on the scientific basis for using insects in shrimp feeds. Um, I am the founder and managing director of Pontus Research. We are a contract research um, lab uh, based in the UK. I'm also a principal consultant for Pontus Aqua, where we uh, give consultation to the industry on, on research uh, markets and, and things like that. So the applied research into transforming organic waste into feed proteins um, through the use of insects uh, started in the 1970s. Um, little progress was made uh, in, the, in the decades following that, mainly due to um, legislative uh, barriers and um, lack of knowledge and understanding uh, and acceptance in the markets. Um, so it was around about um, the early uh, 2010s that the momentum started to build for insects in in uh, animal feeds, um, and the uh, the relationship between Pontus and Protix began in 2014 uh, when we started to look at the market acceptance for black soldier fly larvae meals in um, in fish feeds. Initially, at that stage, we were looking at uh, ornamental ornamental feeds, um, and it was it was clear that there was a lot of interest. Um, However, the volume was quite low, so um, Aqua uh, was sort of deemed as the, as the way forward in that respect. Um, at the same time, uh, a, a body of work was, was um, becoming available on, on the potential for various different insect species to be, uh, to be used in, in aqua feeds um, from reviews and, and basic research. Uh, and they all highlighted the strong potential for insect meals in uh, in fish feeds as a replacement, uh, specifically at that time for for fish meal. However, at this time, the wording of the um, EU legislation around processed animal proteins uh, in the wake of the BSE crisis in in the UK um, meant that insects couldn't be used in animal feeds. Um, and the reason for that was that uh, processed animal proteins, according to that legislation, had to come from slaughterhouses. And of course, uh, insects don't come from slaughterhouses. So by emission, it really meant that insects couldn't be used. So there was work to be done to allow these products to be used in aquafeeds. So uh, we move forward um, to 2017, where things have, have uh, moved forward a little bit. Um, some, some good research has been done by various companies and, uh, and research groups uh, showing the, the potential for these, for these products. So good palatability uh, and an improvement in growth in some cases over fish meal. Um, and, interestingly up to a hundred percent of the replacement of fish meal so there was real real some excitement building about at, the, at this stage to as to um you know what the what the potential could be for this in the market and at this time in 2017 um protix uh, who are obviously hosting this this webinar raised uh, 50.5 uh, million us dollars to expand their insect farming business so we start to see real investment in the in the sector mm -hmm. so by uh, the end of uh, 2017 the lobbying 
uh, from the insect uh, production sector and uh, the good research that has been happening um, in the market sees the EU amend their legislation to uh, to allow insects to be used in in uh, animal feeds in aquaculture feeds specifically. Um, but it was it's important to 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 show that this wasn't done lightly. Um, it was after you can you can see the the years that have passed since since it really came on the on the agenda, um, and it was specific, specifically uh, forbidden to uh, to grow insects on substrates containing kitchen or food scraps, meat or bone meal, liquid manure or feces, and the reason for that is for um, to prevent transmission of, of any potential pathogens that might come from from uh, from kitchen scraps or these uh, these animal animal products. So it was uh, clear that you know there were still uh, robust controls in place to ensure that anything that did come out of this um, this sector and as a result of the relaxation of the of the rules uh, around insect proteins meant that we would still ensure that the products coming out were safe, healthy and nutritious ingredients for aquafeeds. Uh, these decisions weren't taken lightly. So uh, in 2017, we also see uh, an increase in the, in the scientific uh, research and publishing of that research. Uh, in this case, showing multiple insects as uh, promising candidates for replacing fish meal and aquafeeds, not just uh, black soldier fly larvae, we're also looking at, at mealworms and things like that. So, so the, the momentum is growing and, and research at the same time showing up to 30% of black soldier fly meal inclusion uh, resulted in no deleterious effects in shrimp feeds. So you know, we, can, we can see that not only can we replace you know, a lot of the fish meal, but actually high levels of, of of insect meal itself in the feeds um, has has no uh, deleterious effects and in, in many cases has been shown to be to have positive effects. Um, so in 2018 we start getting interest from from the big players in the, in the market. Um, Scretting starts discussion with producers, um, does some R&D trials with varying results. We can't expect all trials to have fantastic results all the time, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but the important thing is that potential uh, for this, these products was confirmed then and the interest was cemented. And by the end of the year, um, trout fed insect proteins are available on French supermarket shelves. So it's, it's moved from an idea into a, real, into a real thing and people are eating fish having been fed on insect, uh, insect proteins. Mm -hmm. In 2019, things really start to get busy. Um, which has positive uh, positive signs for, for a lot of players in the market. Uh, Scretting commits to volume from Protix. Um, Cargill signs strategic partnerships to scale up the market feeds made with insect proteins with other, other companies. Biomar announces a feed um, called Salvea, uh, which is available in French and Spanish markets, which again is containing insect feeds. And it's important to note that there's a lot of companies in this in this uh, in this sector, in this area, and they're all being courted by these big uh, feed manufacturers. So it seems like there's there's still a lot of space for these different uh, different operators to be to be doing their work uh, within the market, and that's a good thing because that drives innovation. Um, without without competition, things get stagnant. So it's important that the that these companies are looking at across the board at Protix and their um, competitors, if you like, across Europe um, are in the sights of these companies, Screttings, Cargills, Biomars, and these companies are signing agreements with different um, different insect producers. So that's that's a very healthy healthy position to be in um, coming into 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 this year, where obviously the world has seen a a, a, um, a crisis like it's never seen before in our lifetimes which has shone the light on food security and safety and sustainability and all the things that we've been we've been talking about for years are now in the public domain. So crucially, these developments, rule changes and acceptance by the big players in the aquafeed markets 
are all driven by good science. Um, first of all, we've got the product development, um, where a lot of research time and, mon and money goes into, into uh, husbandry and culture methods, um, drying, defatting, and then we move on to the animal trials. Um, this is uh, some video from one of the trials we've recently done for, for Protex, which we'll come on to again a bit later. Um, and then, of course, the dissemination of the findings, because um, research is, is nothing if it's not um, disseminated properly and widely uh, in the, the, through the right channels to the right people. So, um, so through these uh, steps, we can ensure that, um, that we're driving the industry forwards. So Pontus in 2019 was, was asked by Protex to look at the palatability and um, attractant properties of their product Protein uh, AX Pro, which is a, um, a hydrolysate uh, in white leg shrimp, Lytipineus vanami, uh, which you and I eat as, as king prawns. Um, they asked us to, to look at the properties uh, of this product versus traditionally um, used attractants in shrimp feeds. These would be um, krill and squid meals uh, and oils in, uh, in the feeds. Um, so we looked at replacing these uh, products entirely with um, uh, zero, so that's a control, one and two percent of this uh, protein AX Pro product. Um, and each each feed had uh, had equal fish meal, so um, so there wasn't a fish meal effect. Um, so we built a bespoke choice chamber um, to test each feed against the zero tractant feed uh, with shrimp. So you can see the diagram in the top right hand corner here. Um, it's a it's a, it's a simple uh, simple chamber, but it, it allows uh, animals to to choose between one of three uh, products in each chamber uh, and to measure. Which measure how this how this works. Um, we did two two tests, um, a palatability test where we placed uh, shrimp in the acclimatized chamber, um, place feeds in A, B, and C, um, lift the shutter. We allowed the allowed the the smell, if you like, to permeate a little bit. Lift the shutter and then um, at timed intervals record how many animals in each chamber. Uh, the second method was to look at the time to strike, which is which is something we've used in fish before. It's a little bit slower in uh, in shrimp, obviously, but we do the same thing. Uh, animals in the acclimatized end feed in um, in one of the uh, boxes at the end, uh, let the smell permeate, lift the shutter, and then count the amount of time it takes for the animals to travel to the food and start eating. So here we have the results of the first uh, part of the trialing. Uh, just note that HSW here is the, um, the working name for the Protein AX Pro um, product in the trial. Um, no significant differences in the shrimp counts were observed between the 0% HSW um, plus uh, the traditional attractants and the zero HSW without the traditional attractants. Um, suggesting that those traditional attractants have very little effect on the uh, on the palatability or attractiveness of the feed uh, for the shrimp. Um, we can then see a rising uh, interest in the feeds as the um, as the product as the hydrolysate product increases from one percent to two percent in the feed. Um, at each time count, so there's a, there's there's a definite and very strong attractability and palatability effect of the of the product. And remember that these are this is a this is a choice um, chamber. So these are these are um, shrimps uh, actively choosing um, a one feed over another over multiple uh, multiple runs. There were five repetitions of each uh, of each comparison. So that there's uh, this, this data we believe is, is very robust um, and definitely shows that the uh, that the product has a has a has an important effect. So if we go on to the time to strike data here, it's showing us how long it takes animals to start feeding on uh, on any one of the um, of the <coughs> experimental uh, feeds. Um, 
the variability is quite high because uh, it takes a long time for a shrimp to, to, to reach the, the feed after choosing which one it wants to go to. I um, mean, fish, you might expect this to be um, to be fractions of a second. Uh, in shrimp, it takes a lot longer, and so there's a lot more um, sort of scope for, for dawdling, hanging around, moving quicker. Um, so over the over the number of, um, of repetitions we do, we do get this very vari uh, this variability. However, it does very clearly show a trend for um, a, a decreasing time to start feeding. Um, with an increasing level of um, of the hydrolysate. Um, so this is this data is unpublished. Um, I believe we're looking at um, uh, publishing it in the near future, um, and it reinforces the strong potential for the widespread use of insect products in shrimp feeds. Um, the Protein AX Pro sh looks like it's better than traditional um, palatability and attractiveness products. Um, and definitely unlikely to have any negative effects uh, when we come to, to feeding insect proteins um, to the shrimp. Um, however, further research is key to moving things forwards, and it always is. Um, acceptance doesn't mean we stand still. There'll always be things to do and things to prove. And so there's many work, there's many um, areas that, that work can continue, and we very much hope that this is going to be the case. Uh, with us and Protix and, uh, and other companies moving forwards. So I'd just like to say thank you very much for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please go through the channels that Protix, uh, the hosts, have, um, have, have provided. If you want the reference lists, then please do get in touch. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. That was uh, really interesting. Hi. Hello. Hello. Um, so the chat is again moving quite a bit. A uh, couple of questions here. Um, this one, let's start with a short one here. Uh, is insect meal currently being used in shrimp feed? Um, there are there are some feeds um, currently being produced for salmon. Um, that are containing uh, shrimp feeds. I mentioned uh, one of them in the presentation there, Salvea, uh, by, um, by Biomar. Um, as far as I'm aware, there aren't any commercial feeds being made at the moment for, uh, for shrimp. Um, and, but there is a lot of work going on. So I know, you know um, a lot of the big companies are looking, are looking at this, but as far as I'm aware, the, the, the shrimp, uh, the shrimp feeds aren't there, but the fin fish feeds have started to, to come onto the market, mainly as a, as, a, as a test for the market, I would say, at the moment. Yeah. Still, still in development. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have some other questions here. So this one about Asia. Uh, what is the potential for insect protein in the Asia aquaculture? So I think the, the potential for, for insects um, Insect meals in in aqua feeds is is wide and it's uh, it'll 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 be um, shown you know in the near future to be to be a a potential ingredient for a lot of species including marine species and um, and many of these species will be in the Asian market for example um, tilapia uh, there's been there's been research work with tilapia uh, we've done some uh, work with tilapia insect feeds and uh, and uh, it's been very successful. We currently have a, a grant application in process um, in Singapore, and that will be looking at uh, insect proteins in feeds for fish such as uh, barramundi, uh, snapper, grouper, species like that. So all marine fish. I saw a question earlier that was uh, asking about uh, about marine animals and, and insect meals. Um, so so this this work is is. Uh, is hopefully, if, if these grants get approved, this work will be will be going ahead. So the the potential is definitely there, and uh, we hope to be a part of proving that over the next uh, over the next few years. Great, great. Um, then this one, um, maybe I don't know if you can answer it, but uh, earlier speakers discussed about the antioxidant properties of the product. Do you see antioxidant potential in the shrimp diet? Is that something you can elaborate a bit on? Um, 
I would say there's 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 research has shown that um, positive effects on growth of astaxanthin uh, inclusion is an, uh, which is a known uh, quite strong antioxidant. Um, it's a it's an expensive ingredient, so I would imagine that other ingredients that also show strong antioxidant uh, properties uh, can only can only improve the situation um, if if first uh, something is shown has been shown at quite high levels to to have positive effects and of course then there could be there could be benefits on an economical level because um, uh, you know if you can if you can uh, increase antioxidant levels uh, with a with a potentially cheaper product then you know then you could have uh, have health and and um, economical benefits there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then one more is: um, Could this product also have potential application in giant ti tiger prawn feed? Um, I don't see why not. Uh, I was having a look earlier at whether there's any any literature on that. Um, doesn't seem to be much. Uh, the, all the research has focused so far on on vanami by the looks of things. Uh, Little plants vanami, the the uh, white leg white leg shrimp. Um, but they, I mean, they're very similar. They're both pinnate shrimp, um, so they're very similar, uh, very similar animals with similar nutritional requirements. Research has been done recently on on whether there are differences. Um, so when and if those uh, that research comes on the table um, then then you know it'll be it'll be something that we can we can sort of transfer knowledge over to with with maybe tweaks for the species i mean remember that at the pontus and that what i do is a we're a contract research lab so we do what the market requires so we're slightly different to some of the other speakers who are who are maybe um, you know university based who can sort of run their own projects we we do what the market asks us to do so at the moment it's focusing on Vanami, but I imagine it, uh, especially as we move into other markets with these products, then then the demand for the research uh, to to drive those markets will will definitely uh, increase. I think. Yeah, enough possibilities for the future. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you, Jack. That was really interesting. Okay. Thank you.